In this video, you're going to learn a few alternative ways that you can use Mongoose to query your data. Now, inside of the server test file, we already looked at one way to do dot find. We're going to look at two more, and then we're also going to explore how to validate object IDs. In order to do all of this, we are going to make a new file in the playground folder. I'm going to call this one mongoose hyphen queries dot JS. And the first thing we need to do is load in the mongoose file here and the to do file here. I'm going to use ES60 structuring like we've used for all files where this happens. And then we can require in the local file using the relative path. We need to go up a directory out of playground into server into DB. And finally, the file name we're looking for is called mongoose. We can do the same thing for to do. We're going to make that constant to do from the require return result, And the file here is going to follow the same path. We need to go back a directory and into server, but instead of going into DB, we'll go into models. Then we'll get the file to do. Now, before we can actually do any querying, we are going to grab an ID for one of our existing to do's over in Robo Mongo in the to do app database. I'm going to explore all of our documents and I'll just grab the first one. I'll right click to edit it. Then I can grab the ID, excluding the quotes, parentheses, and the object ID identifier. With this ID in the clipboard, back inside of Atom, I can make a variable called ID and set it equal to the ID I just copied inside of single quotes. And now we have an ID and we can use this for all of our querying. Now I understand you've already used to do fine before, but we are going to talk about a few other things. So for the moment, we will be starting with that. To do dot find. It lets you query as many to do's as you like. You can pass in no arguments to get all your to do's back, or you can query by anything. Right here, we're going to query by ID. Now, Mongoose is fantastic. It doesn't require you to pass in object IDs. It can actually do that for you. In this case, what we have is perfectly valid. We pass in a string as the value. Mongoose is going to take that string, it's going to convert it to an object ID, and then it's going to run the query. This means we don't need to manually convert our string into an object ID. Now, after we make the query, we can attach a then callback. We're going to get all of our to do's. We'll name that argument right here, and we can go ahead and print them to the screen. Console.log to do's and the second argument will be the actual to do's array. Nothing new here, aside from the fact that you can indeed pass in an ID as a string. The next method we're going to look at is one called to do dot find one. Now to do dot find one is very similar to find. The only difference is that it returns one document at most. That means it simply grabs the first one that matches the query you have. Now, in our case, we're querying by a unique ID, so it's only going to find one matching item. But if there were other results, for example, if we queried all to do's with completed false, the first doc would be the only one that returns, even though there's two that match the query. What we can do to call find one is identical to what we did with find. And to prove it, I'm actually going to copy the code. I'm not even going to rewrite it. All we need to do is change a few things. Instead of to do's, we get to do. We're just going to get a single document, not an array of documents. That means I can print a to do string followed by the to do variable. With this in place, we now have enough examples where it makes sense to run the file and see exactly what happens. Over inside of the terminal, I'm going to kick things off by running this file and I'll run it through nodemon, nodemon, playground forward slash mongoose queries dot js. When I run the file, what do we get? We get our to do's array, our array of one document, and we get our to do object. If you know you're just trying to fetch one individual item, I recommend using find one over find. You get back the document as opposed to an array. This also makes it a lot easier when the ID of the to do you're looking for doesn't exist. Instead of getting an empty array as the result, you'll get null back and you can work with that doing whatever you like. Maybe that means you return a 404 or maybe you want to do something else if the ID is not found. The last method we're going to look at is to do dot find by ID. 
Now, Find by ID is fantastic. If you are just looking for a document by its identifier, there is no way to query by anything else other than the ID. And all you do is you pass in the ID as the argument. You don't have to make a query object and you don't have to set an underscore ID prop. With this in place, we can now do the exact same thing we did with Find one. I'm going to prove that by taking the then call, pasting it right here, and just changing this from to do to to do by ID. Now, if I save the file, NodeMon is going to rerun, and what do we get? We get the exact same result for both. If you want to find one document by something other than ID, I recommend using find one. If you want to find one document by ID, I always recommend using find by ID. Now, all of this and more is available on the docs. So if you want to dive into anything I discussed here, you can always go to mongoosejs.com, click on the read the docs link. And over in the left hand side, they have a couple links. The one that we're looking for is the one on queries. Right here, you can learn more about how to query your docs, but we pretty much covered everything this page talks about. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what happens when the ID isn't correct. And this is going to be the case because remember, our API is going to be getting this ID from the user, which means that if the ID isn't correct, we don't want our code to fail. We want to elegantly handle these errors. To prove this, I'm going to go ahead and tweak the ID a little bit. IDs do have specific protocols. So what I want you to do for this example is find a number in your ID. I'm going to go with the first character because it happens to be a number and just increment it by one. I'm going to go from five to six. Now we have a valid ID, but the ID is not going to be in the database because I tweaked it. And obviously the other to do in the database does not match this ID. Now with this in place, you can see as we restart the server, we get an empty array for the find call and we get null for both find one and find by ID. When your ID does not match anything in the database, an error is not going to get thrown. It's still going to fire the success case. It's just going to fire it either with an empty array or with null, which means when we want to handle that case where the ID doesn't exist in the database, all we have to do is add an if statement right here. I can add an if statement. If there is no to do, we're going to do something. And that something is going to be to use return, which prevents the rest of the function from executing. And we'll print a little message console.log ID not found. Awesome. Now, if I save the file, the last call should look a little different right here. Instead of getting to do with null, we get ID not found. And this is perfect. Now we know how to query using find one and find by ID. And we also know how to handle situations where the ID you're querying for, it doesn't actually exist inside of the collection. I'm going to set the ID back to its original value, changing the six to a five. And if I save the file, NodeMon's going to restart and we're going to get our document back. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how to validate an object ID. What we've done so far is we've created a valid object ID. It's just of a value that is not in the collection. But if we were to do something like tack on two ones, we would actually have an invalid ID, which is going to cause errors in the program. Now you might think, why would this ever happen? But it could happen because the user is the one specifying the ID down below. We're going to add a catch call onto find a by ID. We're going to get that error and simply print it to the screen using console.log. Now to illustrate this, we don't need all three queries in order to clean up the terminal output. I'm going to go ahead and comment out find and find one with this in place, our invalid ID and the catch callback, we can save the file. And over in the terminal, we should get a really long error message. Here we go. We have an error message cast error cast to object ID failed for the following value. This is warning you that your object ID doesn't not just exist in the collection. It's actually completely invalid. Now running this with a catch method does let us handle the error. We could do something here like tell the user, Hey, the ID that you sent through is invalid, but there's also another way to get it done that I prefer. What we're going to do is load in the object ID off of the MongoDB native driver. And that's something we did before right here in MongoDB connect. We loaded it in object ID. Inside of mongoose queries, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a constant called object ID, and we're going to get it from the MongoDB library. 
Now on object ID, we have a lot of utility methods. We've looked at how we can create new object IDs, but one thing we also have access to is a method called object ID dot is valid. Is valid takes the value, in this case, it's our string right here, and it returns true if it's valid and false if it's not valid, which means we can add if conditions to validate the ID before we ever run the query. In order to do this, we're going to add an if statement and we're going to check if the value is not valid. I'm going to flip it using an exclamation mark. Then we can call object ID dot is valid. By flipping it, we've essentially created a method that tests whether an object ID is not valid. The value I'm going to pass in is just going to be the string up above. And now we can add some code to run when the ID is not valid. Console dot log ID not valid. Now, if I go ahead and save the file, we should get our ID not valid message. And then after that, we should get our error message printing to the terminal because we do still have our catch call and this query is still going to run over here. We get just that ID not valid prints to the screen. But now we know how to validate IDs and that's going to come in handy in the next video. With this in place, it's now time for a challenge. Before I set up the challenge, I'm going to comment out the ID and our is valid call. And down below, I'll comment out find by ID. I'm going to leave them here. You can use them as a reference for what to do in the challenge. Your challenge is going to be to query the user's collection. That means that you're going to want to go ahead and move into RoboMongo and grab an ID from your user's collection. Here I have just one document. If you have zero documents for whatever reason, you can always right click, insert a document, and all you have to do is specify the email. Now, in order to make that query over inside of Atom, you are gonna need to load in the user mongoose model because currently we only have the to-do one required. Down below, I want you to use user dot find by ID to query the ID that you picked over in RoboMongo. Then you're going to go ahead and handle the three cases. There's going to be the case where the query works like we have here, but there is no user. In that case, you're going to print something like user not found. You're also going to handle the case where the user was found. I want you to go ahead and print the user to the screen. And finally, you're going to handle any errors that might have occurred. You can simply print the error object to the screen for that. There's no need to use is valid for this one. All you have to do is fill out the find by ID call. When you're done, go ahead and test it. Save the file, make sure that the user shows up, then tweak the ID, making sure your other cases work as well. Take a moment to pause the video, knock that out, and when you're done, click play. How'd you do? Hopefully you were able to get that done using the find by ID method. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is import the user file. I'm going to make a constant. I'm going to grab the user variable off of the return result from require. And we're going to follow the same path we have here. We have to go out of the playground directory into the server models directory. And finally, the file name is user. Now that we have user imported, we can query it down below. Before I write the query, I am going to fetch an ID over in RoboMongo. I have one right here. I can edit the document, highlight it, copy it, and move back into Atom. Inside of Atom, I'm going to set up my user find by ID call. All I have to do is pass in the ID. I have that in the clipboard. I'm going to wrap it in quotes. Excellent. Next up, the callbacks. I'm going to attach a then callback passing in two functions. The first one is when the promise gets resolved, and the second one is when the promise gets rejected. For rejections, all we're gonna do is print that error object to the screen, which means we can use console.log e. Now, if things go well, there are still a few exceptions. We want to make sure that the user actually does exist. The query is still gonna pass if the ID doesn't match anything found inside of the collection. If there is no user, we are going to stop function execution using return. Then we're going to go ahead and print using console.log unable to find user. Now, the last case we need to handle is if things actually go well, which means that the query was indeed valid and the ID was found inside of the user's collection. Right here, 
I'm going to console.log using our pretty printing technique, the user variable. JSON.stringify, passing in our three arguments, user, undefined, and the number two. With this in place, I can now go ahead and save the file and open up the terminal since it's currently hidden. And what do we get? We get our user showing up in the terminal. This is fantastic. If you're seeing this, you successfully completed the challenge. Now I can also test that my other cases are working as expected. I'm gonna change this six at the end of my ID to a seven, save the file, and when it restarts, I get unable to find user, which is expected. Next up, I'm gonna change it back to a six, but I am gonna tack on a few ones or any other characters. In this case, I'll use two ones and two A characters. This time we do get our error. We're unable to cast that value to an object ID. Let's undo the change to the ID and now we're done. I'm gonna wrap this video up by committing our changes. I'm gonna shut down Nodemon, run and git status, and we have one new file. I can use git add to add it to the next commit. Then I can use git commit to make the commit. A good message for this one is add queries playground file. Awesome. With this in place, I'm going to push it up to GitHub and we are done. I will see you next time where you will be responsible for creating an entire API request. This one is going to be a challenge. I am super excited to get to it. So stay tuned. I will see you then.